Williams, who are the first team through to the Challenge Cup final this month. The first to be held at Wembley. Congratulations to St Helens. What a victory for them. The season in the final at Wembley. First of all, congratulations on, on obviously getting your team to, to the Challenge Cup final. And I mean, you know, and what, does that, what does that exactly mean to you? I'm not sure I can actually put it into words. I've, Challenge Cup's really special to me personally and to a lot of the girls. It's how I fell in love with the game. It was going down to Challenge Cup final, getting paraded as part of the Champ Schools tournament. And that was my first experience of what Rugby League was as a kid. So to have the chance now to go full circle and not get paraded at, at the final, but actually be there and playing our own final at Wembley, iconic stadium, yeah, it means the world. And we probably put a lot of pressure on ourselves going into that semi-final. Me personally put a hell of a lot of pressure on myself. I don't think I've ever been so nervous for a game in my life. Um, but yeah, just pure relief afterwards, I think, to get the result we wanted and, and know we're going to get the chance to walk out when we'll be the first. You know, look, hopefully the girls, this team we've got, will have many, many more finals at Wembley to come. But I think being part of that first one, iconic, historic, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I remember like, I was part of a team that, you know, when, when the new Wembley was built and I was part of a team that played in the first Challenge Cup final back, back there. And I, I remember that being a huge motivator for me and, and, and the team. Uh, so I, w I would assume that it, it, it's been very similar for, 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 for the girls this year. Yeah, it is. And I would have been there watching you at those finals. And, you know, all my family are Warrington fans. So actually, it was, it was crazy to think. I remember Saints just being so dominant and yourself personally, obviously, really successful time there with the Lance Todd trophies and how, how brilliant you guys played there. So yeah, 100%, the fact that it's at Wembley, the fact that it's this big occasion where actually we get to share the stage with, you know, the men and you know, you've got the best that Rugby League have on offer at the stadium I, for that final. I just think it's going to be outstanding. So yeah, I think that for me meant a lot. And I can imagine for you as well, having that personal performance, getting those Lance Todd trophies, that must have meant even more. Yeah, it was all oh, really special for me. I, I mean, like uh, we we played in a number of Challenge Cup finals when the, when they were taken on the road when Wembley was getting built, so Cardiff and Murrayfield and uh, Twickenham, different places like that. And whilst they were still still special, it just didn't have quite the same feel as going going to Wembley. So to finally get the opportunity to play there and then be successful off the back of it was, you know, certainly a wonderful time in my career. And you know, the moments that you create after that, and I know you girls joined us a couple of years ago on an open top bus trip you know, around the town and celebrating those types of things as well. And I think that's what makes these occasions really special as well. It's not just a thing that happens on the day. There's a build up to it. There's obviously the game, which is the most important thing. But then there's obviously if you get the right result, you know, a really good few days after it as well. So it's almost like, a, a you know, more than a week in terms of you know, an occasion. And I think that's what makes it you know, extra special and makes it very different to any other game. And that is the last action of the game. From both sides, but it's St Helens who are the first team through to the Challenge Cup final next month. The first to be held at Wembley. You know, we we didn't get the result that, that we we wanted in, in, in our semi-final uh, uh, a few weeks ago, but obviously, obviously you girls did. And I was in the stands, obviously prior to our game, watching certainly the back end of your game, and uh, there was a lot of emotion uh, attached to that game and obviously for the game to to finish like it did what were the emotions like amongst the team you know at that point yeah i think you know for me personally i think for most people once you get into a game no matter how much the nerves build before once you've took your first carry made your first tackle you know the go you're thinking about what's going on in the game and that's one of the only games in my career i've ever felt nervous throughout because it was just so close it was try for try and so, as soon as it was getting towards the end of the game, I was thinking, not golden point. I, I've never been in a golden point game. We don't play that in, in our regular fixtures. We don't have golden points, so it's not something we're used to. And Matty Smith had actually said in the week, just let you know, obviously, it's golden point and you know, kickers, make sure you're ready and that sort of thing. And Faye's really calm, really cool. She's like, yeah, don't worry, I'll be ready. For us, it was also that game awareness and understanding that we had to switch on for when our emotions were everywhere. And it was like, right, okay, how do we manage this? How do we get where we need to get to? And, you know, fail, joke and laugh, because I, I give her a bit of a spray because no one's telling me where they want me to land. And I'm like, who's, who's going for this one here? So I think I take the carry in for Faye's drop goal. Um, and it's the slowest ruck in the world, because, you know, there was player left on the ground and 
she's not getting out of the way, so TJ takes the world to pick the ball up and get the ball to Faye, but I think that actually helped York not to put pressure on, because we were trying to not be offside. And it was like slow motion when she dropped that goal. I just remember staring at her thinking, is this going, is this going? And then everyone started screaming and running around, and all I could think was, the game's not over. Like, everyone's screaming, so they're all jumping on each other, and I'm screaming, like, Faye, calm down, 47 seconds. We need to see out 47 seconds. So you see a face change on the video, because I'm giving her a bit of a spray to just calm down. I was like, I'll give her all the plaudits in the world, but once that whistle goes... <laughs> so, yeah, it was just pure relief, I think, when we saw it out. It's probably the worst 47 seconds of rugby you ever saw. When I was sat in the stand watching the game, I went and sat, and I was sat to... And I had Leah uh, and a few of the girls sat immediately to my right. And what was really noticeable is how invested they were in, in, in you girls get, getting to Wembley as well. And I think that's the, the sign of a really strong group when the players that are not there, the players that are disappointed that they're not playing, can actually put that to one side and really get behind the team. And that was, that was really evident to me when I, was, when I was sat in the stands watching the game. One, just one of the things I wanted to like speak to you about. You came down and did a talk when we were Thatto Heath girls ahead of, you know, we won lots of Challenge Cups and, and Grand Finals when we were there. It never felt the same. I couldn't, I couldn't even tell you what the score lines were or where they were played. That's the sort of difference between this and Wembley now. But, you know, you gave up your time and came down because the club still supported us then, even though we weren't necessarily linked with the club. Obviously, we were a successful St Helens based side. You'd mentioned around, you know, being in a, uh, in a big game in a final and at half time it's a, it was about you know managing riding you got to manage and ride the storm yeah just weather that storm and then you mentioned about you know stepping up and saying no we're going to be the storm we're going to take it to them and that's something that's always stuck with me you know I've took that that's been a message of mine on uh, at England games when it's about going into big games against big nations I've used that and that's something every time in big games when you talk about the opposition and what they bring and you focus on that and you say, you know, we've just got to, you know, we've got to ride that, we've got to absorb it. No, we've not, we've got to take it to them. And I think that was a big message that I took personally into that semi-final. It's something that I still use myself today is that sometimes, you know, you can subconsciously start talking like, negative connotations around, start talking the opposition up and what they're going to bring and how, how are we going to deal with it. Well, actually, what it's about is what you're going to bring. And I think, you know, that's always, you know, important in big games is go out there and be your best and, and let them worry about you more so than more so than the other way around. Obviously, you, you mentioned something uh, earlier, Jody. obviously around, and I think it's probably it's a bigger pitch, it's more about the growth of women's sport at the moment and you see you know, the Lionesses and what they achieved last year and what they're doing now out in the World Cup and, and where football, professional football has got to for women. And I'll say this respectfully, you're, you're <laughs> someone older. who's uh, <laughs> coming towards the back end of their career, whether you play for another two, three, four years, whatever, you, you might not be someone who bears the fruits of your labour, yeah. so to speak. So, you know, how does that sit with you? Yeah, well, to be honest, Roby's given me some sort of uh, promise here that I might have a few good years left <laughs> yeah, in me. Yeah, yeah, still I mean, going, I think isn't he's it? a superhuman, but... <laughs> yeah, look, I know that, and I think that's why I'm really making sure you enjoy every moment at the minute, because you don't know how, how long that lasts for. You know, this could be the only time I get to Wembley. I might get to Wembley two or three more times. You just don't know, and for me, I know that, and my family have often said, oh, you're, you know, you're five, six, seven years too early, aren't you, in your career? And I'm like, yeah, but actually, no, because... I feel fortunate and I think I've got a lot of gratitude because I've seen where it's come from and where it's come to. So for me, I feel fortunate that I've got that gratitude, I've got that comparison, that actually every single thing I do now feels like the biggest thing in the world and that's quite a special place to be in. But also, I can feel part of the journey. You know, just like players before me, you know, these England players I played with when I made my debut at 17 that were incredible players and should have been huge names, but people don't necessarily know them because the game wasn't big enough then and there was no profile, it wasn't on television. So, you know, I feel like I owe it to them to make sure I take it a step further and then I'm sure the girls underneath me will take it a step further again, but I'll have a lot of pride when I'm sat with my feet up, not hurting on a Monday morning after a game. And I can see the girls regularly playing on television, playing in incredible stadiums, maybe being semi-professional or professional. Yes, obviously, it'd be nice to be professional and all those things which hopefully are going to come in the future. But for me, I just, yeah, I just want to make sure I enjoy every minute because I'm sure you've been there when you've retired and you look back, you've got all the incredible memories that they're the ones that keep you happy. You don't forget the hard times. You don't forget, you know, getting in at 11 o'clock at night after training and then rushing off to work. They're not the things I'm going to remember when I retire. 
it's the Wembleys, it's the Challenge Cup lifts, it's the great times I've had with the team. And I suppose you must have had that same sort of feeling when you retired, looking back on, you had the most incredible career. You had so many great memories to look back on. I suppose it's that same feeling, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, and, and look, I probably, like, I'm, I'm really fortunate that I got to have a 20, 20 year professional career and get, get paid relatively w well for doing that. You know, whilst I, I was fortunate to, to get paid, it was never really about the money for me. Uh, I was very lucky to obviously have, you know, rugby league become my job. Uh, but, it, but, but like I said, it was never really about the money. It was about the experiences and the life experiences that you, that you can have. And you know, I was really fortunate, uh, you know, to have you know, many experiences, some negative, some, some positive. But some of the standout ones are playing at Wembley with my teammates, you know, lifting that trophy above your head. Uh, so <laughs> what, what I would say, Jordy, well, what I would ask you is that, you know, and I don't, and I know you probably say you don't want to get caught up in the result or think about the outcome yet, and I completely understand that from a performance perspective, but just what would it mean for Jodie Cunningham, the girl who was at Thatterweath all those years ago, the girl who was getting paraded around the ground, you know, with her school team, to actually walk up those steps and lift the trophy above her head? You're going to make me cry, Willow, <laughs> even thinking about that. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard because all the focus, all my energy, all the pressure I put was on the semi-final because it was like, get there. You've just got to get there. You've got to be part of that occasion. And I put so much pressure on myself, probably too much on the team as well, which, you know, I was trying to manage that. How much do I talk about it? How much do I big it up as a captain when actually we've got to perform? And, it, you know, some girls don't want that level of pressure. So then once we got through to the final and then it was, we might actually lift it now. It's not just about getting there, we're there. We might win it, we might lift it. And the first time I thought about it, we went and did a bit of a tour around Wembley, took a few photos the other week and I was looking up and it's different for us. So we've never had a lift where you go up the stairs and then you collect from there and like, that's totally different. And I was like, this, I was walking up those stairs thinking, next time I do this, could be as a Challenge Cup winner. And yeah, it's just be incredible. It's just that, it's the icing on the cake, it's, it's not what you do it for. Do you know what I mean? I would, I'd work just as hard, no matter what, even if we're not in these finals. And I know all the staff and volunteers and the rest of the players would. But that's just that, it's, it's that moment at the end where you just think it's all worth it. It's all worth it, all the sacrifice you make, all the times where it feels too hard and too much. Look, hopefully that's, that's where we get to. I know we've got a squad to do it, but obviously you've got to perform on the day, so. Yeah, we're, we're ready and we've been in big games, luckily now. We've had experiences in big stadiums with big crowds, so I think we're ready, I think we're prepared. We just have to go out there and do it on the day, but you know, I'm fully behind our girls and I, I think we can do it. What, what about the stadium, like, isn't it? When you, walk, when, when you walk out and you look, it's just enormous. Like, you, know, you get used to playing in stadiums around the north of England and this is just a different beast, isn't it? When, when you walk out there, you look up and you think, wow. And I was really, like, we played against Catalan in 2007. I think there was 84,000 on that. That, that day and it almost seems to me now quite surreal like it didn't happen yeah. like I, I, I remember going to Wembley watching Manchester City in a, in, a, in a cup final standing in the crowd looking around at the thousands and thousands of people there the players on the pitch and actually going I did that and it's almost doesn't seem real yeah. <laughs> like I played on that, that pitch in front of as many people as this it was, it was so strange so what 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 I would say is, is like be really conscious of soaking up the occasion, yeah. like checking it, getting you, you know, taking in the surroundings. It's so, I think it's so important uh, to, to do that because like you say, you talk about life memories and life experiences, you know, that's certainly one that can't pass you by. Yeah, well, Roby uh, came in and was, gave up his time before the semi-finals, just give us a bit of words of advice, a bit of wisdom. And he mentioned that, he mentioned that the moment that you walk out and you see and you hear the crowd, it's overwhelming. It, you cannot believe how big that stadium looks and how full it looks. And, you know, I got goosebumps when he was talking about it and, you know, we hadn't even got there at that point. So, yeah, thinking about it now and that, you know, it is something we want to take in. It's something that, like I say, not many people get to do and no, no women have ever got to do, you know, women's rugby league players have ever got to do before. So, you know, we owe it to ourselves, we owe it to our family and everyone who's got us there because, you know, the crowd's going to be filled with our families too. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you, know, you know, what I will say, Jordy, is obviously we're, we're, like I've mentioned, we're really disappointed that we can't be there with you on the day. Obviously, we've got now a fixture the day after that, so we, we'll be here preparing for, for that. Otherwise, we'd have loved to have been down there supporting you, you girls. Uh, but what I do want to say is I want to wish you all the best. What I never do, I never say to people in, in big games is, is good luck. 
you know, don't rely on luck. Yeah. <laughs> luck luck's, luck's going to get you nowhere. <laughs> you know, rely on performance. But yeah. you know, we wish you all the best. To, you know, and on heart, you know, I can say we're so proud of you as a team. You know, yourself as a person, and Matty, and what you know, what, what you're achieving. You know, with with, with the women's team. Uh, and no one will be more delighted than us to see you bring the cup back to this club. Thanks, well, we'll, we'll do it for the whole club. It's not just for us, it's for the whole club. Thank you.